Now, what is the de- the delay time? In other words, you know, you send a command to you know Voyager one. How long does it take to get there, and how long does it take it to even respond when it can? Yeah, it's it's over twenty two hours now for a command to get to Voyager one, and so it takes another twenty two hours, so you know, almost two days to come back before we know. It's sort of like saying hello and waiting two days for someone to say hello back to you. And so it's it's far enough away now that it's it's a long, long wait, even at the speed of light. What's the signal strength like at this point? In other words, is is it is it a really difficult signal to pick up when you're trying to listen for a communication from a Voyager spacecraft that distant? And given the fact that these old spacecraft are losing voltage. Right. It's a very, very faint signal that's coming back from the Voyagers. I don't have an exact number, but it's very, very faint. I mean, the total power coming out of that antenna is, is like maybe the, the equivalent to the power of your light bulb in your refrigerator or something. But we have these huge antennas. You can think huge ears on the Earth. Some of them are 70 meters in size, and they're spaced around the Earth at three different complexes. And so we can use those to listen for the data to come back. In fact, uh, Voyager 1, sometimes it, it's been recording information about one frame a week of high rate data for the plasma wave spectrometer and then a couple times a year we send it back and then we have to use the 70 meter plus four of the smaller 34s all put together working together to pick up a very faint signal that's coming back now from the tape recorder the digital tape recorder on voyager one is still working and its data rate is a little bit higher than we usually get so we have to use all of the antennas what we call arrayed together to get that signal back. So it's just really amazing what we can do. Digital tape recorder, is that actually a mechanical, something analogous to like an 8-track <laughs> that's still working? You're exactly right. 8-track tape recorder. The tape physically moves across the head and we record on a track and then we play the track back. And it's that's exactly right. That's how we got back all those pictures of the planets that we flew by early in the mission. It could hold, I think, all of like 100 pictures. And then we had to turn and play them back. But yes, an 8-track digital tape recorder. Unbelievable. And then it's still working. And it's still working. In That's deep amazing. space. <laughs> we have put, we put, the humans <laughs> have put an 8-track tape recorder that still works after almost 50 years into interstellar space. <laughs> Pretty amazing. I, ah, Yes. Did you know Carl Sagan back in the day? I didn't know him well, but I would see him. He would be there for every one of the planetary flybys. And he was always very gracious and and, uh, interested in talking about his ideas. As Everyone was so interested in sharing their ideas about what we might see and what it all might mean. And he had had his show at the time. And uh, he was really the one that was key in getting back that pale blue dot image really convincing NASA that we needed to take Voyager 1 before the cameras were turned off. So on Valentine's Day, we turned the cameras and took one last series of images of which that pale blue dot of Earth is one of them. So yeah, he was really remarkable. Uh, He was also very proud at helping us get uh, Chuck Berry after the Neptune flyby. Chuck Berry actually came to JPL and he played Johnny B. Good to the flight team. And it was a great party, a great celebration of the success of Voyager to that point. They actually televised that. I remember it in 1989 where Chuck Berry played Voyager Be Good, I guess he I guess he said or something similar. Yeah, to that. it could be. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was very it was interesting because I, I I wish that we would do television coverage of stuff like that today. You know, like with New Horizons, and obviously we live in a very different internet world now where you can watch whatever you want. But back then, that was an event. The The flyby of Neptune was an event. And I, I sort of miss those days in a certain in a certain sense. What do you think? Yeah, I know what you mean. I miss those days as well because I remember through the Voyager flybys, in particular for Neptune, we had TV cameras set up in the, in the cafeteria and all these different places where you could just stop and watch the pictures come back one by one. And in those days, you know, at Neptune, it took, it seemed like forever to read back a frame, but you could stand there and line by line, watch as each picture would come back. And I remember just sitting there, especially in awe for the Triton pictures that came back. Uh, they came back in the middle of the night 
And all of us were just gathered around watching line by line as this new world was revealed for the first time. Very exciting way to watch and participate as part of it. You know, though, that that did get repeated many years later with the, you remember the the first pictures from, um, I forget which lander it was, one of the one of the rovers, it was either Spirit or Opportunity, and it was coming back and every, it, it was pretty clear that it landed in a crater that was in sedimentary rock, <laughs> which, I mean, <laughs> sedimentary rock right there. <laughs> right, right, yes. 